The story begins in New York when NYPD surrounds an apartment building. The leader of the force calls out to the fugitive vigilante Ghost Spider to surrender. With tensions rising, Ghost Spider suddenly bursts through a window to escape. Officers try to shoot her down, but they keep missing, so she webs up all the officers before swinging away, telling them to come prepared next time. Footage of this incident is shown to S.H.I.E.L.D. agents Daisy Johnson and Sean Lucas, a.k.a. The Patriot, by Captain George Stacy of the NYPD. Captain Stacy claims it would be understandable if it were just an incompetent rookie's mistake. But since Stern was one of his best officers, he had no choice but to reach out to S.H.I.E.L.D. to bring in the swinging vigilante. He's determined to catch the ghost spider after she's been accused of murdering his daughter's best friend, Kevin. He claims that vigilantes who go bad are far more dangerous than ordinary criminals because of what they inspire others to do. The ghost spider was supposed to be a hero until she took an innocent kid's life. He hopes to stop other vigilantes from thinking they can end their way without consequences. Captain Stacy admits that S.H.I.E.L.D. is more situated to the task than the NYPD. Upon further reviewing the footage, Daisy suspects the ghost spider isn't working alone. When she rewinds the footage, it shows that the room suddenly gets darker when she breaks through the window. Captain Stacy claims that the ghost spider has always been solo and insists it's just a trick of the light. He had officers comb the entire building during the incident and found no one else. Patriot claims it would be easy to catch the ghost spider, but Captain Spacey begs to differ. Little does he know that the ghost spider is his very own daughter Gwen, who's fallen asleep in the garage while still in costume. She is startled by her band, the Mary Janes, entering and quickly changes into her civilian outfit before they see her. They wondered why she looked like a mess, to which Gwen joked how a SWAT team chased her for six city blocks, to which they suddenly burst out in laughter. They think she was making an excuse when she ate too many pizza rolls and passed out in the garage. The Mary Janes finish man practice in Gwen's garage as they wrap up MJ short for Mary Jane claims that a new verse came to her while singing the chorus. Gwen stops her when she wants to change the song and tells her to stop tweaking their songs every time they play them. MJ claims that she just wanted them to be perfect to which Gwen explains that they will be when they get older, but for now she wants it to be an experience of being a garage band. Gwen calls it a day after Gloria complains that she still has pre-calc homework and tells Betty to use her spare time to rearrange her YA first editions again. Meanwhile, she tells MJ to record the tweak she was talking about earlier, and if she still feels it's better, she promises that they will listen to it in the morning. MJ assures that it will be so great that they will be dying to change it. With Betty and MJ gone, Gloria approaches Gwen and insists they talk as she notices Gwen has become distant since her best friend Kevin's death. Flashbacks show that the ghost spider was there during Kevin's death and funeral. She tries to put on a brave face and pretend to be okay, but Gloria sees through the facade and worries that she is still in denial. She tries to deflect, but when Gloria presses the issue, Gwen claims that nothing will change the fact that Kevin is already dead and is determined to catch the one responsible for his death. However, Gloria believes that her alter ego, the ghost spider, is responsible for Kevin's death, as reported by the authorities, and worries that she may get herself in danger. During the conversation, Gwen keeps getting flashbacks of Kevin, like when she came out to him with her powers. Gwen then gives Gloria a reassuring hug before sending her away and gearing up. As she swings through the city as Ghost Spider, it is later revealed in a flashback that she confronted Kevin's true killer, an inhuman woman with glowing knives when the police surrounded the building. She had her cornered that night and demanded to know why she had her friend killed. Little did she know that the killer had backup, which rammed her through the window into the awaiting SWAT team. Although the killers may have gotten away, she thinks she can track them down again, when she's suddenly ambushed by Patriot, who cuts her webbing with his shield. He demands her to surrender to S.H.I.E.L.D., but when she tries to make a joke about how the NYPD has been after her for months, Patriot explains how Captain America personally trained him. Ghost Spider interrupts him talking and webs him while he is giving her the speech of whether she wanted it the easy way or the hard way. She then tries to escape by scaling the building, but Patriot breaks free and pulls her back down. Ghost Spider kicks him off the building, but when he pulls himself back up, she disappears on him and slips him, swinging away when his back turns. Patriot then radios Daisy to tell her that their quarry refused to come peacefully and chases after her using his shield as a glider. Doreen Green patiently waits for her friend Kamala Khan in New York City. Her trusty squirrel sidekick Tippy Toe attempts to grab the box of cupcakes she saved for her friend. Doreen excitedly hugs her best friend and offers her cupcakes to celebrate their very first superhero team-up. 
Kamala brings up her Hero Watch app and claims it had reports of the ghost spider fighting a few blocks away. Kamala thought bringing in an ex-superhero would be befitting for their debut, when the ghost spider suddenly falls from the sky above them. With her fast reflexes, she catches the cupcake Kamala dropped and sets them on the bench. She then attempts to web-swing away, but Doreen throws Tippy to stop her from escaping, biting off every web line she shoots as the ghost spider comically battles Tippy, Kamala, and Doreen decided to eat one cupcake each before changing into their outfits. Doreen then gives a dramatic introduction of the BFHFS, short for Best Friends Heroes Forever. With Doreen as Squirrel Girl and Kamala as Miss Marvel, they suggest they give up and turn herself in peacefully. She told her that if she genuinely felt she was innocent, then it was time for her to stop running away and prove it. Ghost Spider tries to slip away and wall crawl, but Miss Marvel catches her with her massive hands. She quickly slips out of her grasp, but Squirrel Girl declares they won't let her escape. Ghost Spider dares them to give it their best shot. Out of nowhere, Squirrel Girl starts to narrate the situation, hoping to raise the dramatic tension, but Miss Marvel stops her. Realizing they're in a rush, they utter a battle cry and leap into action. Ghost Spider confronts Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl and quickly webs them up. When she tried to escape, Miss Marvel stretched her arms and pulled her back down. She then frees Squirrel Girl, who orders Tippy to execute Plan M59. Miss Marvel then grows to a giant size, which Ghost Spider climbs on her while Squirrel Girl willfully chases after her. Miss Marvel asks her to give her space before the strain of being big causes her to shrink back to normal size, resulting in Squirrel Girl falling on top of her. Ghost Spider mocks them before exiting as she crawls on the underside of the Midtown tracks. With things not going as expected, Squirrel Girl suggests they make up for it by fighting anime style calling out their attacks as they go. Squirrel Girl chases Ghost Spider in an upside-down crawl on the tracks. Ghost Spider tries to disrupt her by firing web balls. But Miss Marvel catches them protecting Squirrel Girl. She then combines them to become one large web ball she throws back at the fugitive hero, which explodes upon contact. Growing frustrated with their persistence, Ghost Spider tries to glide away, but Squirrel Girl performs a slingshot off Miss Marvel and tackles her in midair, pinning her down to the ground. Pinned down, Ghost Spider complains at how she managed to get away from S.H.I.E.L.D., only to be taken down by a pair of nobodies. Miss Marvel responds that Ghost Spider was supposed to be a hero until she took someone's life. Ghost Spider pleads innocence and explains that everyone was so obsessed with meting out punishment that they never bothered to check if she was actually guilty. Hearing her say that, Squirrel Girl gives her a chance to explain her side of the story promising to let her go if they believe her. Otherwise, she'll face the full wrath of Tippy and her squirrel friends. Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvel give Ghost Spider a chance to explain her side of the story. If they believe her, they'll let her go. Otherwise, they'll turn her into the authorities. She explains that the victim Kevin had been her best friend since second grade summer camp. She informs them that he is the only one who knows about her powers. She later discovered that Kevin was an inhuman after he was affected by the Terrigan wave, causing him to develop cryokinetic abilities. He hopes to use his powers to help people following her example and asks Ghost Spider to help train him. When Kevin failed to show up on the night of their first patrol, Ghost Spider tracked his phone to a warehouse where she found him dead on the floor. She was in shock at the time that she didn't notice the killer's presence until her spider sense alerted her of the ambush from the killer, which she describes as an inhuman woman with glowing knives. During their fight, the killer grazed her and she felt as if her life was sapped out of her forcing her to flee. Given that there were no marks on Kevin's body, the police quickly assumed the Ghost Spider was responsible and had been on the run since then. Although Miss Marvel's convinced by her story, Squirrel Girl, who thinks it may be made up, remains skeptical. Ghost Spider convinces them that Kevin is her best friend when she shows them her commemorative friendship bracelet, winning them over to her side. The heroic duo offers to help her catch the killer, but she refuses as she doesn't want them to become fugitives if the cop finds out they are with her. Ghost Spider explains that until she finds a way to clear her name, she is unable to help New York City the way she should, and claims that they could do it in her stead. Out of nowhere, Tippy alerts them that Patriot is getting close, and Squirrel Girl asks Ghost Spider to leave while she still has the chance. Before she web-slings away, she asks them if they can occasionally save a few muggers for her to defeat. Miss Marvel sarcastically comments that between the two of them, that's not likely to happen. Ghost Spider's relieved that Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl believe her and feels that she has a long way to go to convince everyone else in New York. Patriot shows up explaining that he isn't gullible enough to believe she's innocent. He once again demands she surrender, but Ghost Spider attempts to glide away. Patriot shoots a rocket at her and chases after her with the glider pulling her down to the ground. 
Out of nowhere, Daisy, aka Quake, appears behind her, knocks her down with her powers, and then cuffs her as she's led into their flying car. Ghost Spider tries to convince them that an inhuman woman with life-sucking knives is responsible for Kevin's death. This catches Quake's interest, but her partners stop her, telling her that the guilty always play the innocent, especially when handcuffed. As S.H.I.E.L.D. agents turn and go Spider to Captain Stacy, she quickly begs them to take her around back and promises to answer all of their questions, but they ignore her. As the fugitive is brought before him, Captain Stacy declares how he will lock her away in the deepest, darkest cell he can find for what she did to her daughter and her friend, not knowing that she is his daughter. As he's about to unmask her, Ghost Spider slips out of her cuffs and webs them both before she slips away. Patriot tries to chase after her, but Quake claims she was long gone. Captain Stacy's furious at them for having a faulty tech let their fugitive escape and demands to speak with their commanding officer. Later, Ghost Spider shows up before Quake when she's off-duty. She wondered why she let her go, explaining how she realized that Quake subtly used her powers to break the cuff. Quake tells her that the official story was that the bolt shook loose, which caused it to malfunction. She further explains how Quake deduced Gwen's secret identity as the Ghost Spider, given her reaction when they brought her to Captain Stacy. She tells her that she recognized the Inhuman she described as Kevin's killer and suspects she might be in Boston. Quake explains how she came upon this individual in a side project she's been working on and asks Gwen to tell her everything she knows about the Inhuman or her accomplices especially teleporters. She suspects that something bigger is going on. Ghost Spider finally tracking down Sheath, which lures her into an abandoned warehouse. When she thinks she has cornered her, Exile appears behind and attacks her. Out of nowhere, the secret warriors show up who were tracking Exile. Patriot demands Ghost Spider to surrender, but Daisy, aka Quake, stops him, telling him that their mission is to capture Exile. Quake got distracted and Exile stole her phone, which she used to track him. Having them surrounded by the heroes, Exile and Sheev escape through a portal. Quake offers Ghost Spider to join them as it will be the fastest way to find Sheev. Given that she's working with Exile, but she refuses. Back at their hideout, Patriot gets frustrated over their lack of teamwork. Resulting in the villains escaping, he criticizes his teammates for being unprofessional. Squirrel Girl confronts him and takes him outside on a day off. Meanwhile, Gwen returns home to practice with the Mary Janes, but gets irritated when the band decides to take a break. Gloria talks to Gwen, who grows worried over her sudden change of behavior. She tells her that Gwen's father keeps calling and asking for her whereabouts. Gwen asks her for more time and to keep covering for her until she catches Kevin's killer. Back at their hideout, Quake replicates the tracker she had on Exile on her phone when Ghost Spider sneaks in and tries to steal it. She trips the alarm and quickly gets surrounded by the secret warriors. After much convincing, Ghost Spider agrees to team up under the condition that she gets to catch Sheev. Exile reveals that he plans on stealing Hala's ship that is stored in a Stark Industries warehouse when Iron Man confiscates it in their fight. He intends to use it when Quake's tracking program to find the rest of the Inhumans. The secret warriors arrive at the warehouse where the NYPD has it surrounded. Worried that the cops might get caught up in the battle, Quake used her powers to separate them from the villains in an enclosure. When Squirrel Girl tried to attack Sheath with Patriot's shield, she knocked her down instead and used it to escape outside. Ghost Spider and Quake quickly head out to chase after Sheath. When Sheath tries to attack Captain Stacy, Ghost Spider jumps before him and saves his life. The rest of the secret warriors defeat Exile by working together and surrounding Sheath, where she is forced to surrender. Having apprehended Sheath, they turn her over to Captain Stacy and explain that she's responsible for Kevin's death. With justice finally served, Ghost Spider joins the secret warriors. 15-year-old tech genius Riri Williams is studying at the prestigious Empire Tech when she gets caught in a cosmic battle between Captain Marvel and Hala the Accuser. Hala gets wind of Kree technology stored by Tony Stark at Empire Tech. Hala intends to use the Kree ship's power core to open a portal back to her planet. Squirrel Girl and Miss Marvel have been stalking Captain Marvel's activities, hoping to see her in person when they come upon a battle. They quickly call for reinforcements, to which the secret warriors sort out and arrive on the scene. Captain Marvel is shocked to find the team there and orders them to help save civilians. Every Iron Man shows up to help defeat Hala. When all students are out of harm's way, the team joins the fight, but a slight mishap causes the force field protecting the Kree device to malfunction, giving Hala a chance to grab it. The secret warriors managed to stop her from taking it, but the damaged power core exploded when it cracked open. Hala managed to escape, and the multi-million dollar endowed lab is in ruins. Tony Stark criticizes the team for getting in over their heads. At the same time, Captain Marvel scolds them for fighting without orders, which Quake takes seriously given that she's the leader. 
It was revealed later that it was an Iron Man who joined the fight, but Riri Williams, who'd created her version of Iron Man's suit. After her father's car accident, Riri's been working on proving herself to save others, as Iron Man did through his inventions. Having lost the power core, Hala thought she could use Riri's arc reactor as a power source to open a portal. She approached Riri disguised as Daisy Johnson, pretending to offer her a job with S.H.I.E.L.D. When she turns her back, she knocks her out and steals her suit. Riri later confronts Daisy, who realizes that Hala pretended to be her to steal her suit. They tracked her down at the park where she had already finished making a teleportation device. Not only did they fail to stop Hala from escaping, but she also summoned an anti-plasma goo, which swallowed everything in sight. They tried to contain it, but it is indestructible. It even adapts when it consumes powers, like how it grew tentacles when it ate ghost spiders' webs. Riri managed to create an antivirus program to regain control of her artificial intelligence AMI, which Hala reprogrammed to attack the secret warriors. Riri was forced to destroy AMI's arc reactor to stop Hala's device. Captain Marvel arrives just in time to witness them in action and commends Daisy for a job well done. Later, the secret warriors storm a warehouse after reports of Kree devices being stored by villains. Riri appears in a new armored suit and joins the secret warriors as Ironheart. Gwen Stacy struggles with balancing her personal life and being her alter ego, the Ghost Spider, and she's failing at both. Her friends criticize her for not showing up to band practice while she gets an earful from Patriot for showing up late to training. It's finally the day for the much-awaited Battle of the Bands, and Gwen promises to show up on time for their performance. When she did finally show up for training, it was already over. Ghost Spider explains how she's preoccupied with tonight's competition, at which Squirrel Girl convinces everyone to go to support their friend. As she heads out to pick up Father's Laundry, she runs into an accident at a nearby construction site. She quickly calls for reinforcements to which they were quickly sprung to action and helped save civilians. Ghost Spider explains how she heard a loud sound before the accident when they suddenly heard it again from a distance. The secret warriors quickly arrive and find a runover train about to fall from the tracks. The team soon sprung to action and saved everyone. Patriot suspects that given the similarities of the incidents, he believes it is connected. Inferno explains how he couldn't find any fire residue, which Ironheart concurs. Given that she hasn't seen any residue to explain what caused the explosions, when they tracked the source, they were suddenly attacked by a sonic blast from a distance. By triangulating the incidents, Ghost Spider deduced that these attacks aimed to cut off access to Gwen's concert venue. The Secret Warriors quickly run to the last remaining access, where they find Melissa from the Screaming Mimi and the Thunderbolts band. It was later revealed that she was an inhuman and responsible for the attacks to prevent other bands from showing up at the competition. Although they outnumbered her, the Secret Warriors struggle to restrain her. Ironheart discovered that she's wearing a vocal amplification tech, which gives her a sound barrier against attacks and makes her powers lethal that can take down even heroes. Mimi then sends a crushing blow to send the heroes underground before she escapes into the air. Ironheart gives Ghost Spider a device that can turn Mimi's power on her just enough to fry the device. She then chases after Mimi and knocks her out, with everyone's help crashing near the concert's venue. Gwen's band is next to perform and she's still far from ready. Seeing her friend's disappointed faces, Ghost Spider walks up to her friends and reveals her identity to them. She explains how she struggled to live a double life, being part of the band and a member of the Secret Warriors. Her team arrives and shows their support, encouraging her to be who she is. Her friends also comfort her and explain that she doesn't need to be perfect, but honest with them. With that said, Mary Janes go on stage, and the band puts on the best performance of the night. After a hard day's work at training, the Secret Warriors take some time off when Captain Marvel shows up unannounced and informs them that she has a special mission for them. She explains that Princess Shuri of Wakanda has visited them, hoping they will learn from each other. She informs the group that Shuri is the lead innovator of Wakandan technology, and hopes to share that technology with the world. Captain Marvel expects the team to show her around while she's visiting. Although Shuri's excited to see them in action, Gwen explains that they only go out in an emergency. With that said, the others bail on America to handle Shuri, to which she invites her to where she works restoring vehicles. Shuri is overly eager to fix stuff that she invited herself to do America's work for her. Later, Shuri attends school with Kamala, to which she warns her how school life is a struggle. Instead of being overwhelmed, Shuri steps up and excels at everything she does, even at skateboarding, which she claims she's never done. Shuri is great at it, which, much to Kamala's dismay. Shuri then returns to the headquarters, sneaking up on Doreen, working on the training device. Although initially excited at having her around, she quickly has a change of heart, when nothing she invented seems impressive, given that Shuri already has developed something similar. 
Doreen later showed her their training equipment, but Doreen failed to stop it when it went out of control. Shuri steps in and effortlessly shuts down the device. Shuri later shows up at Gwen's garage upon her request as she can no longer skip out on band practice. The Mary Jane show up and is shocked to find Princess Shuri with Gwen. While Shuri listened to them practice, she quickly offered to help fix the issues with their new song. Much to Gwen's dissatisfaction. As the girls discuss their displeasure at how Shuri seemed perfect at everything, they witness an oil tanker explode from a distance. Shuri quickly springs into action, rushing to the ship while the others changed into costumes. Shuri quickly used her nanites to contain the oil spill, when an explosion catches her off guard and she gets stuck under the debris. The rest of the secret warriors arrive and rescue everyone. However, when they realize that Shuri's still on the ship, they quickly search for her and save her before the ship explodes. After saving the day, the heroes commend Shuri for quickly springing into action and containing the situation. Shuri claims that they too were amazing at how they managed to be heroes and still have lives beyond it. Suddenly, Captain Marvel shows up impressed with how things turned out. She explains how she and Black Panther had always wanted Shuri to live her life as a teenager, outside of the responsibilities that come from being of royal heritage. She also claims she's always wanted the team to take pride in their abilities and become more confident like Shuri. Captain Marvel tells them they have proven themselves heroes, ready to start taking on actual missions. Dante and Kamala are on a school trip to the museum when the alarms suddenly go off. They quickly change into their outfits, but discover it's a false alarm. They run to Zayla, who claims to have come too close to the display and triggered the alarm. It was later revealed that Zayla was casing the place for her parents, who sneaked back into the museum that night to steal the expensive artifacts. They almost got caught when they tried to steal the royal crown under tight security. Meanwhile, America's irked when the rest of the team complains of struggles with their own families. Gwen has an overprotective father, while Kamala has an overbearing mother. Later, America's fed up enough that she lashes out at Kamala and speaks her mind. Speaking of family drama, Dante's younger sister Gabriella tracks him down and asks him to come home. He sends her away, insisting that being around him is dangerous. Later, Zayla is piqued by a particular necklace when she realizes it can steal other people's powers when she comes in contact with them. Realizing the potential, Zayla decides to lure Dante into an alley where she steals his powers. She then uses it against Dante, who calls the others for backup. Zayla inadvertently sets the alley on fire, which the secret warriors manage to put out. Doreen has been tracking suspicious fire activity in the neighborhood, hoping it would lead to Zayla. Zayla returns home and tries to explain to her parents how she has powers now, but they continue to ignore her. Fed up, she decides to steal the one thing her parents failed to get, the royal crown. Zayla returns to the museum and brazenly uses her powers in public. The secret warriors arrive hoping to stop her, but instead get their powers stolen. Out of nowhere, Dante shows up to help them. They later discover that their powers return when the beads on the necklace drop. After a quick tussle with the team, they quickly recover their powers. Although Dante initially hated his powers, he claims that he wanted to be himself, even the parts he didn't like. Without her powers, the secret warriors turn in Zayla to the authorities. Having seen the error of her ways, Kamala tells America that although she may no longer have her family with her, they consider her a part of the family. Dante also accepted his mistakes and returns home with Gabriella to visit his parents. The end. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos and make sure to subscribe and tap that bell to be notified about our latest videos. We'll see you next time.